Imagine being able to find inner peace and happiness no matter what is going on around you in a world that is always trying to tell us how we should feel, think, and act. That's not only powerful, it's revolutionary. It's about taking control not of the world, but of something much more important and within our reach, our own minds. It teaches us how to be strong, be grateful, and live a full life. But this isn't just a history lesson. It's about you and your life right now. It's about dealing with the chaos of our modern world without losing your cool. It's about finding peace in the storm and joy in the smallest things. It's about turning your dreaded mornings into a powerful start to a day full of purpose and joy. So if you've ever felt overwhelmed by the because you're here, you're not like everyone else. You're someone who wants to learn more and grow. Pay close attention to this video from beginning to end. You're even more unique because you're determined to fully understand this material. This term may sound complicated, but it comes from Japan and means something very simple. It's about finding the perfect balance between your interests, skills, what society needs, and what you can be paid for. It's your unique reason for being. Imagine waking up every morning with a clear purpose that makes you excited and makes the thought of hitting snooze completely unnecessary. Marcus Aurelius wasn't just about keeping a straight face through life's problems. He really believed that we're all here to make a difference and do something important. He told us to see every day as a chance to do our part with honesty and passion. Now think about that in terms of Ikigai. It's not enough to just find what you love. You need to make sure it fits with what the world needs and what you're good at. That's where the magic happens. But how do you find your Ikigai? It starts with some self-reflection. Ask yourself, what do I love? What am I good at? What does the world need from me? What can I get paid for? It's okay if you don't get the answers right away. The point is to explore different parts of your life and hobbies and see where they come together. The search for your ikigai isn't just a fluffy, feel-good activity. It's about building a life full of meaning and satisfaction. When you align your daily actions with your greater purpose, even the most boring tasks become important. Because you're more present and involved, your relationships start to grow. Your creativity soars because you're following your real passions, and you're generally happy. As you think about setting your alarm for tomorrow morning, think about what Ikigai means to you. What could be so compelling that you jump out of bed excited to start the day? Remember that this isn't about changing overnight. It's a process of gentle unfolding. And as Marcus Aurelius would say, it's about doing the work day by day with honor and dedication. Finding your Ikigai isn't just about P. The ancient Stoics, especially Marcus Aurelius, believed that our actions should have a purpose. They didn't think that we should just do things without thinking, but that we should take steps that are led by our inner compass. This way of thinking fits perfectly with how we get ready for the next day, beginning the night before. Here's the deal. The way you spend your evening affects the next day. It's tempting to stay up late watching your favorite shows or scrolling through social media, but think about how that prepares your brain for the next day. It needs time to relax, to process the events of the day and get ready for what's to come. This is where a good pre-sleep routine comes in. Imagine treating your evening routine with the same care and attention. Making some plans for tomorrow can also change things. It might be as easy as writing down your three most important things to do tomorrow. As long as you do this one thing, you'll have a clear goal when you wake up. And this is where the stoic attitude really shines. It's about letting go of what we can't control and focusing on what we can. We may not be able to plan our whole day, but we can choose how we start it. And don't forget to calm down with some deep breathing or meditation. This practice isn't just for fun. It's a powerful tool that tells your body it's time to rest. Deeply inhaling and slowly exhaling lowers your heart rate and lowers your stress. Preparing your body for a deep, restorative sleep. It's like pressing the reset button, 
making sure you wake up not only physically refreshed, but also mentally and emotionally. In today's always-on world, this might sound like a Herculean task, but it's absolutely necessary for setting the tone of your day. Marcus Aurelius believed that people should live with purpose and focus. He wasn't distracted by the noise of old Rome. Despite having many distractions, he stressed the importance of focusing on the present and the task at hand. He knew something that's even more true today. The quality of your attention determines the quality of your life. So how can we use this ancient wisdom in the modern world? For starters, we can make a space in the morning that is purposely free from digital distractions. This isn't about giving up technology, but rather choosing not to let it control how you start your day. It's tempting to roll over and check your phone right away, but that puts you in a reactive state where you're responding to the demands and dramas of the outside world. Instead, give yourself the gift of a calm start to the day. Imagine spending the first hour of your day doing things that make you feel good and help your mind work better. Read, meditate, write in a notebook, or just sit with a coffee and look out the window. This time isn't lost. It's an investment in your health because you're not being distracted. You're not just avoiding stress. You're actively creating a reservoir of peace and focus that you'll draw from throughout the day. Making the most of your mornings isn't about adding more to your to-do list. It's about subtracting the noise that doesn't serve you. It's about prioritizing what truly matters before the day's demand. Start pulling at your attention. This is where the stoic practice of focusing on what's within your control comes into play. You might not be able to control the flood of emails waiting for you, but you can control how and when you choose to engage with them. So tomorrow challenge yourself to start the day on your terms. Resist the urge to dive into the digital world. First thing instead, anchor yourself in the present moment, savoring the peace and potential that the morning holds. Remember, every day is a new opportunity to live more intentionally, more serenely, and more in line with who you aspire to be. Let's make our mornings a testament to that ambition guided by the timeless wisdom of Stoicism and the unwavering focus on what truly matters. Stoicism is mainly about being aware of what we can change and choosing to be good and purposeful in those areas. Not only were Marcus Aurelius, Seneca, and Epictetus talking about keeping a stiff upper lip during hard times, they were also pushing for people to take action taking part in life and letting it control our actions and thoughts. As a practice that embodies this mindset, getting up at the same time every day is a statement that we are in charge of how we start our day and not subject to whims or outside pressures. Stoicism's idea of building a life step by step with happiness in every action is a strong one. It tells us that big changes begin with small, steady actions. It may not seem important to get up at the same time every day, but it's a key habit that makes everything else possible. It's about setting up a stable base for your day so that you're not rushing from the moment you wake up, but instead start with a sense of control and purpose. But here's the thing. Consistency is hard, and that's how it should be. In the beginning, trying to wake up at the same time every morning can feel like an uphill battle. Your bed feels more comfortable than ever, and you can't resist hitting snooze just one more time. As a Stoic, perseverance means reminding yourself why you're doing this and the person you're becoming through this discipline. It means looking past the short-term comfort and focusing on the long-term benefits this habit will bring into your life. Becoming a morning person isn't just about the mornings. It's about embodying the qualities that make you strong, focused, and intentional throughout your day. Our ally Set a clear intention the night before. Remind yourself why getting up at a certain time is important to you. Is it so you have more time for reading or meditation in the morning? Is it so you can exercise? Or is it just so you can start your day in a more relaxed and controlled way? Then, make an environment that supports this habit. For example, go to bed a little earlier to make sure you get enough sleep. Or leave your curtains slightly open to let natural light in. 
Despite all the talk about discipline, consistency, and getting up with the sun, it's important to remember one thing. We're human. And being human means that our brains often choose the easiest path, the one that gives us quick gratification. Starting new habits like changing our morning routines can feel like an uphill fight at first, but there's something incredibly freeing about realizing this. It's not a flaw. It's just part of being human. Let's bring some stoicism into this idea. Along with teaching us how to be disciplined and strong, Stoicism teaches us how to be kind and understanding to ourselves. Marcus Aurelius often reminded himself in his works to be patient and forgiving with his flaws. He knew that scolding oneself for every mistake wasn't the way to grow. Instead, he pushed for admitting our mistakes, learning from them, and then letting them go. When we're trying to form new habits, Despite all the talk about discipline, consistency, and getting up with the sun, it's important to remember one thing. We're human. And being human means that our brains often choose the easiest path, the one that gives us quick gratification. Starting new habits like changing our morning routines can feel like an uphill fight at first. But there's something incredibly freeing about realizing this. It's not a flaw. It's just part of being human. Let's bring some Stoicism into this idea. Along with teaching us how to be disciplined and strong, Stoicism teaches us how to be kind and understanding to ourselves. Marcus Aurelius often reminded himself in his works to be patient and forgiving with his flaws. He knew that scolding oneself for every mistake wasn't the way to grow. Instead, he pushed for admitting our mistakes, learning from them, and then letting them go. When we're trying to form new habits, like morning routines, this method is very important. The first few days or even weeks can be hard. Your alarm goes off and all you want to do is stay in bed. That's okay. It happens to everyone. What matters is what you do next. Do you beat yourself up, getting stuck in a cycle of guilt and self-criticism? Or do you take a deep breath, forgive yourself, and see the next morning as a possibility to try again? Being forgiving and patient with ourselves is not a sign of weakness. It means we're in it for the long haul and ready to handle the ups and downs with grace. This stoic practice of self-compassion is about understanding our nature, working with it, and gently nudging ourselves toward the habits and life we want. Also, taking it easy isn't about making excuses or letting ourselves always fall short of our goals. To grow, you have to be willing to go through learning curves and failures. It's about realizing that every day brings new challenges and chances, and it's in this daily renewal that we find our strength and resilience. So, as you work on forming a new habit, like getting up early, remember to be easy on yourself and enjoy the little wins. Take what you've learned from your mistakes and start each day ready to try again. There's more to this than just getting up early. It's about developing a mindset that's ready to face life's difficulties with a mix of determination and kindness. Putting your alarm clock across the room isn't just a way to make it physically harder to snooze. It's also a statement that you're going to start the day on your own. Terms, even if it means getting out of bed, even if it's comfortable, it's a small act of defense against the allure of sleep and comfort and a step toward embracing the day with intention. Similarly, making your bed every morning might seem like a small thing to do, especially if you're the only one who'll telling yourself that your environment and how you interact with it counts is a form of self-care. It's about making a space that reflects the order and respect you're building within yourself. As Marcus Aurelius would probably say, these small victories are what make a disciplined life possible. They're the small decisions we make every day that, while easy to ignore, shape who we are over time. You're choosing to be the kind of person who values order, discipline, and respect for themselves and their surroundings. But why focus on these small things? They're easy for everyone to do. We can't all control the big things that happen in our lives, the upheavals and turns we don't see coming. But we can control how we start each day how we treat our immediate surroundings, and how we get ready for whatever comes our way. 
By committing to these small acts of discipline, you're teaching yourself how to keep your promises in bigger situations. You're improving your ability to stay strong in tough situations and to approach life with a calm, collected attitude, traits that define the stoic ideal. So, if you're thinking about the role of discipline in your life, start small and look for those everyday chances to practice self-control and order. Remember that it's in the little things that you can make a big difference. These habits aren't just chores or tasks. They're rituals that give your day purpose and your life direction and meaning. The idea behind this is simple but very powerful. Sharing your goals with someone who supports you and holds you accountable can greatly increase your chances of success. It turns a personal journey into a shared adventure, paving the way to fulfilling your morning routine and ultimately your life's purpose. Think of your accountability partner as someone who wants to help you get better. This person will remind you of your obligations when you don't want to leave the safety of your bed in the wee hours of the morning. They will also cheer you on when progress seems slow and celebrate your wins. No matter how small, this relationship is two-way. It's about supporting and encouraging each other based on the idea that we're all... We're all trying to be the best versions of ourselves. The Stoics, like Marcus Aurelius, Seneca, and Epictetus, often talked about how important community and relationships are for building character and virtue. They believed that learning from each other was a powerful way to gain wisdom and that knowing something makes you stronger. In today's world... Having an accountability partner is a nod to this old saying. Recognizing that the path to self-discipline and purpose is a personal one, but it doesn't have to be a lonely one. Having an accountability partner can also help you see flaws in your routine or way of doing things that you might miss if you do it by yourself. They can give you fresh ideas and perspectives that can spur your growth in ways you didn't expect. This relationship is more than just checking in to see if you woke up on time or did your morning meditation. It's about having a deep conversation about what's working and what's not, and how you can both help each other make changes. So how do you find this accountability partner? Find someone who wants to grow and improve themselves as much as you do. It could be a family member, a friend, or even a co-worker. The important thing is to pick someone you trust and can be open and honest with about your goals, problems, and successes. Clear about what you want to achieve and what kind of help you need once you've found that person. Check in with each other often and be there for each other, giving each other support, advice, and, if needed, a light push back on track. When you find an accountability partner, it's not just about getting someone to hold you accountable. It's also about building a relationship that inspires and uplifts both of you. It's about making a space where honesty, vulnerability, and mutual support are valued and fostered. In this space, your morning routines and bigger life goals become intertwined in a collective effort to live a more intentional, disciplined, and fulfilling life. The stoic practice of reflecting on, as soon as we wake up in the morning, we have a new chance to connect with life in a meaningful way, to make the world a better place, and to seek personal growth and fulfillment. Marcus Aurelius wrote a lot in his meditations about how short life is and how important it is to be good and make the most of the time we have. This wasn't meant to be sad. It was meant to free him from small worries and help him focus on his duties as emperor and as a person trying to be good. The idea is that if we keep the end in mind, we are more likely to live our lives with purpose and clarity. Putting the things and people that really matter first. Remembering death as part of our morning routines changes how we approach each day. It's not just another day. It's a gift that we've been given that no one else will get. This realization can have a huge effect on how we spend our time the things we do, the relationships we care for, and the legacy we try to leave behind. It's a reminder to live fully, love deeply, and leave the world a little better than we found it. When we remember that we only have so much time, 
the little things that bother us and get in the way of our long-term goals become less important, we become stronger and less likely to let short-term problems get in the way of our progress. It makes us appreciate the present moment and pushes us to make the most of it. So how can we apply this stoic principle to our daily lives? Let's start with a moment of thought. Every morning, look at the day ahead as a blank page and a chance to make your life and the lives of those around you better. Ask yourself, if today were my last, would I be proud of how I choose to spend it? This doesn't mean having an existential crisis all the time, but rather a deep appreciation for the present moment and the chance to live, learn, and love. By practicing the stoic practice of remembering death, we're not focusing on the end, but on the present and how we choose to live each day. It's a powerful way to fight complacency and a reminder to live our lives with purpose and gratitude. So let's start each day with the awareness that it is. Making the most of our short time in this world to leave a lasting legacy is at the heart of living stoically. We're often told to think positively and picture success and happiness to bring them into our lives. But the Stoics offer a different view that is not only useful but also very empowering. Negative visualization isn't about being negative. It's a way to build resilience, get ready for the worst, and ultimately be more oppressive of the present. The idea behind this practice is to imagine the problems, losses, or challenges you might face in life, from small things like missing the bus or a rainy day to bigger problems like losing your job or a loved one. The point isn't to dwell on these situations in a way that makes you feel worse, though. Marcus Aurelius, Seneca, and Epictetus all thought that we could find more peace and strength by thinking about how temporary everything is that is out of our control. This practice helps us pay attention to the things we can change about how we react, how we think, and what we do. Adding negative thought to your morning routine can change how you go about your day. Instead of going out the door without knowing what challenges might lie ahead, you'll be mentally ready to face them. As you practice, your resilience grows. This way, when life throws you a curveball, you're not caught off guard because you've already practiced this situation in your mind and can use the techniques you've imagined to get through it. Additionally, this practice has a beautiful and somewhat paradoxical effect. It makes us more grateful for the present moment by making us imagine life without some of the things we take for granted. When we return to reality, we have a newfound appreciation for these things. It reminds us of how much we have to be grateful for right now. This isn't about dwelling in fear of loss, it's about using the thought of it to deepen our appreciation for the here and now. How can we do negative thinking in a way that is good for us? Take a few minutes in the morning to think about the problems you might face that day or the bigger picture of what the future holds. Imagine how you would respond, what strengths you would use, what lessons you could learn, and how you could grow from the experience. Then let go of the image and go about your day with a better understanding of your current situation and a sense of being ready. Adding gratitude to our daily lives, especially at the end of the day, can have a huge effect on our health and mood. Keeping a gratitude journal is a beautifully simple yet profoundly effective way to cultivate this sense of appreciation. It's about taking a few moments before we sleep to reflect on the day and jot down a few things we're grateful for. This could be anything from a kind. Gestery from a stranger a beautiful sunset, the completion of a challenging task, or simply the comfort of our bed waiting to embrace us at the end of a long day the act of writing down what we're grateful for shifts our focus from what's lacking in our lives to the abundance that's already present. It's a practice that aligns perfectly with Stoic teachings which emphasize focusing on what we have rather than focusing on what we don't have, undergoing a change of heart, not only means a way to sleep peacefully at night without the clutter of unfulfilled desires or disappointments, it also gives us courage. Our intention is to start the next day with purpose and gratitude, but why do we end the day with gratitude because it helps us end our day on a positive note, no matter what problems we face? This is the process that reaffirms the goodness in our lives. 
Developing a mindset that sees peace and confusion and the opportunity for growth and happiness in every situation. Not only does this nightly gratitude practice have negative effects on sleep, but the way we wake up and approach the morning changes our first thoughts of the day from whining about the alarm clock to quietly anticipating what the new day will bring. We can discover a new appreciation for these exercises to appreciate our lives beyond our personal level, improving our relationships. The more we value the people around us and the more we express gratitude for their presence in our lives, the greater our relationship with the world becomes. Completing our thanksgiving is a practice in which we strive for a healthy lifestyle that is not limited to external accomplishments or possessions, but for inner peace and deep gratitude for the present moment as you complete this journey with 10 stoic-inspired steps. It is clear that each step, each practice, is more than a task. It is a way to cultivate a life of tolerance and depth. Gratitude Practicing these will not make you perfect every day, but it will give you strength, gratitude, and perseverance every day. You have the power to change not just your morning, but your entire life and reflect positive thoughts like kindness, wisdom, and contentment. Remember, this is just the beginning. There is a whole world of wisdom waiting to be discovered and used to help you live a better life. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more videos. Share your thoughts and stories in the comments. Let's embark on this journey of growth, resilience, and satisfaction together. To mornings full of purpose, days full of purpose, and lives full of gratitude. Thank you for joining the Stoic Diary community. See you soon in next video.